Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson. We're here at Kansas State University in the Toxicology Laboratory, but my guest will be Dr. Casey Olson. He is a world-renowned calf-calf nutritionist and production specialist, and today we're going to have a great show talking about how you know when to put cows on, when to take cows off, how many cows, how to improve your carrying capacity of the pasture, and much more. As dependable as the sunrise, in dairy parlors, open pastures, on ranches and feed yards across America, a place where reputation is more than a name, where the science of healthier animals is a way of life, it's the responsibility that drives who we are and what we do. Every decision, every day. It's your livelihood and our responsibility. Closed captioning brought to you by Vet Gun with Amel and new AMA Abamectin Vet Caps, the one two punch against horn fly resistance from AgriLabs. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council, improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. He's back. He's our friend, he's our colleague, he's our cow-calf uh, specialist and um, good friend of mine, Dr. Casey Olson. And I'm glad you're here because people are starting to recognize you now on the show and, and around the country, and they already did, but now you're seeing you on TV. Well, yeah, I, I don't have a life. This is my favorite TV show. It's, it's good to be back, Dan. <laughs> well, we're lucky to have him uh, here. He's at Kansas State University. He's in the Department of Animal Science and Industries, and uh, he is an expert in cow-calf nutrition uh, production, and we are, we're uh, very fortunate to have him at Kansas State. So let's talk about, we're gonna talk about pastures and, and grazing and, and taking care of the, the land. And let's talk first about stocking rates. Okay, uh, you know, they say the, the three most important things in real estate are location, location, location. Yep. The three most important things in grazing management are stocking rate, stocking rate, and stocking rate. You know, and if you ask a, a typical rancher, you know, what's your stocking rate on this particular pasture? They're gonna tell you, they're gonna give you an animal per acre kind of a figure. And that's, that's misleading. Okay, a stocking rate, okay, the rate implies that there's some element of time involved. It's always um, live weight per acre per unit time. Okay, gotcha. it can be it can be a year, it can just be a season, it can be a week or a month. But time is a critical part of, of stocking rate. Sure, because the longer you leave them out there, the bigger the area needs to be, sure. I, I assume. Uh, I mean, that's that's a fact because when you get right down to the nitty gritty, stocking rate is determined by the amount of forage removal per unit time. Okay, and what determines forage, forage removal? The appetite of the animal. What drives the appetite of the animal? Generally, the animal's body size. I know it sounds very simple, but the bigger the animal is, the more uh, dry matter they're going to consume in a day's time or a week's time. Uh, and so, stocking rate should be a function of live weight per unit area, per unit time. Awesome. So, you know, just kind of give me some, I know you travel around the U.S., but some of the differences in stocking rates or, you know, some of the things that you see, okay. where are some of the, you know. Um, okay, I grew up in northwestern North Dakota. It's cold desert, 
and uh, a stocking rate for a year's time is, is definitely going to be in the neighborhood of, of 30 to 60 acres per cow per 12 month period. Uh, and that's, that's of course limited by forage productivity. I mean, here in the Flint Hills, we are blessed. Uh, we have abundant forage. Um, it's very productive. And, and here for 12 months, you know, conservatively 16 acres down to maybe even 10 acres can carry a, a, a pair for a year's time. So quite a bit of difference and, and the resources for those types of things, if you're moving into an area or new to an area, work with the extension specialist, uh, ask the neighbors. Well, both are good resources actually. People that uh, you know, have been in the game uh, in a given area for a period of time are, are generally your, your best source of information when you're, when you're trying to determine how much grazing pressure uh, land will take. Cool. We're going to take a break. When we come back, more with Dr. Casey Olson. You're watching Doc Talk. We'll be back after these messages. Hey, folks. Thanks for joining me on today's Cattle First Minute as sponsored by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica. You know, when we start to think about breeding season and turning bulls out, the one thing I can't emphasize enough is to get a breeding soundness exam done on your bulls before turnout. And some of the things that can happen during the winter, whether it's frostbite in certain areas of the body or there's things that can happen that, that will cause a bull to become uh, infertile are things that you need to make sure. The other thing that's very important on a breeding soundness exam is we have to make sure that we don't have lameness or, or issues with the feet because no wheels, no calves. So making sure that we have a sound bull structurally making sure that we have one that's fertile and, and one that, that can produce enough sperm and enough volume with enough motility with no defects in the sperm is vitally important to making sure every year before you turn out to ensure that you get a calf crop at least from the bull. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council. Improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Casey Olson, who's a professor here in cow-calf nutrition and is a specialist at Kansas State University, travels internationally, uh, speaking on, on nutrition, production, and you know, we gotta have grass. Well, we don't have to, but we'd like to have grass. Right. And so when we have overgrazing, that can be an issue. And anybody who manages grazing livestock, if you ask them what they do, they ought to tell you that they are a natural resource manager first and a cattle manager second. Um, you know, what causes overgrazing? Uh, you, could, you could really come at it from two different directions. Is it too many animals per unit area or is it uh, too long a time per unit area? Most grazing management problems really come down to the second issue. Uh, it's not overuse, it's underresting that causes degradation of, of uh, range and pasture resources. Gotcha. So <clears throat> how, do you, how do you start to gauge some of that? How do you, how do you measure it or how do you you know, I mean, it's kind of like probably like fattening cattle. The eye of the master <laughs> fattens the, the animal, and you got to be watching. There, there is some art to it. Uh, first thing you got to know is is how much useful forage. By useful, what I mean is is uh, forage that is consumable by cattle is produced uh, in a season, and your stocking rate is going to be determined by that forage productivity. Um, you know, uh, land might produce. 2,000 pounds of forage per acre. Question is, can you use 2,000 pounds? The answer is no. Um, generally speaking, the, the old adage in grazing management is you take half and you leave half. Um, you've got to leave adequate leaf area behind so the plants have the opportunity to photosynthesize and store root carbohydrates uh, to regrow leaf area. 
what you don't want to do as a grazing manager is drive an undesirable compositional change, uh, basically a change in forage species composition with too much grazing pressure. So if we graze it down too much, some, some plants can take that and some can't, is what you're saying. Right, and I mean, think about how you eat. Okay, mm -hmm. if, if you had your druthers, you'd probably live on beer and pizza, right? Not good for you. Right. <laughs> okay, but cattle have preferences just the way people do. There are some plants that they prefer and select consistently. There are other plants they leave behind, even though they're abundant. Um, when the, perf the preferred plants get a lot of grazing pressure and the unpreferred plants get no grazing pressure, the, the non-preferred plants proliferate and, and gradually the... Um, the preferred forage species diminish and the non-preferred ones, usually these are weeds we call them, the non-preferred ones uh, take their place. And, and over time, we have a resource that's progressively less useful to nourish cattle. Cool. Well, I think that, that understanding your stocking rate combined with watching what's actually going on, I mean, the weather, different things to that nature are gonna play a role. Yeah, when I teach my students and, and teach uh, producers about grazing management, first thing we characterize is forage availability. Second thing we do is a little bit of education on forage species ID, so we know what the preferred plants are and what the non-preferred plants are. Uh, and basically, those plants that cattle do not eat or, or eat in very sparing amounts, we discount those from forage availability. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right, folks, we're going to take a break. When we come back, more with Dr. Casey Olson here at Kansas State University. Hi, I'm Pat Farley, President and CEO of Enzo Discoveries. I'm very excited for the year of 2019 to be here. Enzo Discoveries is going to have a breakout year in 2019. We're now a veteran-owned company. A lot of our amazing products, platelet-rich plasma, platelet-rich fibrin, we've developed these from scratch all by veterinarians, for veterinarians. We've got adipose stem cells, bone marrow stem cells, we've got three or four other kits we're going to be releasing this year. And today's a good example. We really value our customers. We're doing a, a value-added service here today. We've actually flown in one of the top ultrasonographers in the country, Dr. Cooper Williams, and he's here teaching some of our best customers from around the country, how to not only ultrasound, but how to effectively inject our platelet-rich plasma and use our other kits. So finally, if you'd like to learn more about us, simply go to our website, Enzo Discoveries, that's E-N-S-O Discoveries, and you'll learn more about this amazing company on the verge of going to the next level. Thank you so much. When it comes to stopping horn flies, cattlemen love their vet gun. Today they love it even more because VetGun now has a one-two punch with two VetCap insecticides. New AIM-A abamectin can be used in rotation with AIM-L for effective in-season control. Each delivers a unique mode of action to manage hornfly resistance. So start your in-season rotation program with AIM-L and new AIM-A abamectin VetCaps from AgriLabs. You spent countless hours building a strong operation. But when it comes to trichomoniasis, the odds are stacked against you. It takes just one infected bull to take down the whole herd. Damage could include open cows, lost pregnancies, and lost profits. The good news is with TrickCard, a herd doesn't have to feel like a house of cards. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council. Improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here with my friend and colleague, Dr. Casey Olson, who is a an expert in cow-calf nutrition and production management here at Kansas State University, uh, travels all around the United States working with, with nutrition of, of cow herds. And as we left, we were talking about undesirable and, and carrying capacity. And, and, and so now we're going to talk about how we can improve that, right? Right. And I, I need to uh, leave you with a definition, I guess, right here. We've talked about stocking, right? We really haven't 
talked about how that differs from the concept of carrying capacity. Carrying capacity is the maximum allowable stocking rate that will that can be sustained without driving an undesirable compositional change in the forage. Um, and believe it or not, carrying capacity is is pretty elastic. If uh, and this would be the most important piece of advice that anybody uh, can give you with respect to uh, managing range or pasture is that anything you can do to increase carrying capacity is money in your pocket. Um, you know, think about ways, guys and gals, that you can uh, uh, get rid of bare soil. Okay, think about ways that you can protect areas that are locally overgrazed uh, by cattle from grazing pressure just for a, a period of time. Uh, can you improve grazing distribution? Uh, in other words, get animals to areas of the pasture that they underuse by, by varying placement of, of water and, and mineral. Uh, those kinds of things are the most important activity that you can engage in as a rancher, thinking about how you can leverage your existing resource for one more unit or two more units of animal inventory. Think about it, if you're breaking even with 100 cows, you're breaking even with 200 steers, that 201st steer, that 101st cow is pure profit. Those are freebies. Those are freebies. Well, and then, but you gotta be careful too, because if you do it the other way, next thing you know, you have a lot of bare soil. That's and, right. And a, a dry lot. <laughs> so the improvement in carrying capacity comes first, then the addition of animal <laughs> inventory. Um, but um, you know, I'll give you a, uh, an example from my own experience. Um, 13 years ago, my wife and I bought a very degraded uh, piece of Flint Hills pasture uh, that would, uh, you know, at its maximum um, support about 125 pounds of live weight per acre for 90 days. Okay, with 13 years of work, a little bit of cross fencing, a little bit of water development, that um, that pasture is now carrying about 300 pounds of live weight per acre for 90 days. Uh, it just takes creativity, uh, not necessarily money. Um, you know, we got rid of bare soil by picking up lots of rocks. Okay, we got rid of trailing and gullying by taking the same rocks that we picked up off of the off the soil surface and stacking them in those areas where water was running in an uncontrolled way. We spent you know, less than a uh, dollar per linear foot to put up some electrical cross fencing so we could do a better job with time control in our grazing program. Uh, and now that piece of land cash flows itself. Before those uh, changes, we couldn't make a cash flow. That's why we hang around with this guy, because <laughs> he is a hard worker, creative thinker, but more importantly, his boots are always on the ground and he's somebody that if you have a question on cow-calf nutrition production, get him to your meeting. Come see him at K-State, Dr. Casey Olson over in the Department of Animal Science and Industry. We'll be back after these messages. Some call it a come from behind victory, an unlikely win, a reversal of fortune, snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. This is our moment, our victory dance, because we choose confidence. We choose Zuprevo for BRD treatment. Ask your veterinarian to prescribe Zuprevo. Zuprevo is a fast-acting, long-lasting BRD treatment that you can count on to get the job done. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprevo from Merck Animal Health. Say this is a calf that's been run through the chute a few too many times. Going through the chute stresses cattle, causing them not to eat like they should. Luckily, Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ provides proven protection against key respiratory diseases in a single shot with just one trip through the chute. Talk to your veterinarian about Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ, and soon your calves will relax and eat like a whole different animal. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. ValleyVet.com, ValleyVet.com, Valley Vet Supply. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council, improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hey folks, Dr. Dan here with Dr. Casey Olson from Kansas State University's Department of Animal Science and Industries. We, we left talking about 
a lot of the things that happen during the normal. And now let's yes, talk sure. about managing the, the not so normal. Okay. Um, so that you'll recognize what abnormal looks like when it shows up, you have to know what normal looks like. And, you know, I tell my students, I tell the folks that I work with, you need to become a weather geek. Okay. First, <laughs> first thing you got to do is figure out what your normal forage product productivity is on a parcel of land. I'm not talking about getting down on your hands and knees with the chiggers and, and clipping forage. You can do it with a, with a ruler or a yardstick. Basically in this country, every inch of forage growth that you measure on a ruler is, is worth um, about 250 to 280 pounds of dry matter per acre. So for example, if you stick your ruler in the soil, you measure the forage is 10 inches high, uh, 10 times 250 Okay, would be your forage dry matter production per acre. So you do that a couple of dozen times every summer, you'll know what normal forage productivity is. Find a way to monitor rainfall. You don't have to have a rain gauge in your front, front yard to do that. Uh, the Kansas State University MesoNet uh, has a location near you. You can periodically monitor that. When uh, rainfall isn't quite right, you need to be able to recognize that before the competition does and take steps to diminish stocking rate. And and as we diminish stocking rate, other things we can do is start to stockpile hay, or you know, or get prepared right. for you know. Try when you when you met, when you said before the competition does, that made me think about one of the things I'm always trying to recognize: do I need to get hay or not? Because a lot of times when I realize I need to get hay, I'm not buying such good hay because everything else has been picked through. And you, and you might be buying it at a premium as well. Yeah. You know, my, my sort of living laboratory at the Kansas State University Cal-Calf unit, we've, we've lived through this a couple of times. You know, in 2012, that was what the old timers called a 500 year drought. We could see the train coming down the tracks a couple of months before panic mode hit the rest of the country. So we diminished stocking rate in simple ways. We, we early weaned, uh, you know, with just 100 day old calves and we, we probably reduced stocking rate by 30 to 40% just doing that. Uh, we ended our breeding season early we were just uh, 35 uh, days of exposure that particular year so that we could preg check early so that we can go ahead and market those open females uh, huh. before the summer grazing season was up. Um, we had a marketing plan okay, attached to each one of those reductions in stocking rates so that we knew what to do with you know, 100, 100 day old um, baby calves. We knew what to do with um, our cull females that we couldn't keep for the subsequent winter. It's awesome. I just appreciate what you do. Appreciate you spending time with me and enjoy teaching. We teach a class together here at K-State. It is the best class <laughs> in captivity. It's beef sciences. <laughs> if you want to go to undergrad at K-State, come on. And uh, Dr. Olson and I teach a class together. Be glad to have you. Appreciate what you do. Doc, thanks for having me on thanks. the show. Thanks for watching. Be sure to work with your local veterinarian. If you want to know what we do here at Doc Talk, you can find us on the web at www.doctalktv.com. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Casey Olson. We're at Kansas State University, and we'll see you down the road. Closed captioning brought to you by Vet Gun with AML and new AMA Abamectin Vet Caps, the one two punch against horn fly resistance from AgriLabs. For more information about this program or previous programs, go to DocTalkTV.com. DocTalk was brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals.